First of all, thank you very much for the invitation to be here. <laughs> uh, it's very it's very nice to be talking to our neighbors. It's it's not quite often. <laughs> uh, but so I'm Portuguese. I work in Lisbon. I work in the sleep medicine center from Teresa Paiva. Um, it's it's sleep medicine center, but I mainly work with the chronobiology field. So. Uh, I work with Arcadian Rhythm uh, Wake Sleep Disorders in the center and do, doing research there. But I'm also in the university, so in the Lisbon Medical School. I'm an investigator from the university, from the Lisbon Medical School. And uh, we, we have also a project there in our center in schools. Uh, it's called um, Sleep Project, a, a school sleep project. And it was quite nice also. I could bring it to you, but I think you have all those things also here with quite a lot of success. And I just came to you to bring you some other data. So I also, a, an additional issue that I do have also, I work with Till Grunberg from Munich University. So I'm a collaborator from him. And so I bring you some data from Europe. So UK data, just like your colleague was talking about, I will do a comparison between UK and Portugal and uh, Spain. Also, very few data from Spain, but I also have some data from Spain. And I hope we can have some very good insights and you can have some, I can clear out some things from you. So our three clocks, I will talk about three clocks. We don't have only one clock, we have three clocks. We have a social clock, we have a biological clock, and we have a solar clock and they are all different, and they all have different tasks in our body. So, as I show you here, I'll give you some terms and definitions about chronobiology, because this is a field of biology, and have some very particular things and particular names that if you are studying this, and going to do a little bit more in chronobiology, you should have it, because when reading papers, you will go through it. That, just like a Zyphira, I will show you what it is. So, um, I will talk about filter entrainment. I'll, give you, I'll show you about chronotype and social jet lag. Some of you already told about this concept. Um, so, clock time versus solar time, because this is something that it's an issue for, for you, mainly here in Spain, because you are in a wrong time zone. <laughs> I will show you that. <laughs> And I will, go, I will give you some examples from daily life since I'm in the clinic. So I have examples from actigraphy. Um, I mainly work with actimetry data, also PSG, but mainly actimetry data. Uh, so I have sleep deprivation. I have social jet lag examples from actimetry. I also have some shift work and also delayed sleep break phase disorder. I bring this to you because it's quite common in adolescents. So in adolescents, as I will show you also, they become later, and also the doctor also show you, they become later on, they have a, more, a later period, and as so, some of them develop this disorder. This is a sleep-wake rhythm disorder, uh, and it's very common in adolescents. Although we have it in all ages, but it's usually it starts in adolescents. So they come later, and that they can turn it out to be earlier again. They step on those lateness. So, and I will show you some un an ongoing project that we have in Munich, that it's a project Eurosleep uh, with some unpublished data that, you can, that I will show it to you. So we have the Nobel Prize in Chronobiology in 2017. Many people sometimes don't know, but it's, we are super happy because we have it this. <laughs> We were thinking that probably we'll have some more funding, <laughs> just like that, but <laughs> it's not getting up much, but it's improving, it's improving. So these are the definitions that I want you to have. So chronotype, chronotype is an internal circadian rhythm or biological rhythm of an individual that influences sleep and activity in a 24-hour period. So this is a chronotype. We have a circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm, it's an endogenous rhythm uh, with a period of approximately 24 hours. It's not exactly 24 hours, it's 24.2, more exactly. And this rhythm, it's entrainable, so it's synchronized with the external cues, just like light. That. So, there you have the Zach Giver. 
So as I give her, it's it's a strength, it's a, it's a, it's a synchronizer that we have from the environment that allows us to synchronize to the 24-hour rhythm. Because we have our own rhythm, but we need those cues, those external cues that came up, that put us in, into track. Okay? And in the absence of these rhythms, we free run. I will show you what happens later on with activity. But this is something that is very common and it's increasing a lot in our society because we are living indoors. So we are not having any sun. Although food already also in train, our master, Zeitkeeper, came from light. So, and there's another definition that it's sleep disruption. It's externally mediated changes in sleep continuity, timing, or duration. And restriction entails reduction in sleep duration, whereas sleep deprivation, it's the absence of sleep. There are two misconceptions that many times we do have in sleep fields. That it's a sleep deprivation and it's a sleep disruption. They are, they are different. Okay? There are some differences between them. We can't say the same thing. I'll just show you a video where you can see actually how the thing works out with the photo entrainment. So we have the light came into our eyes through the photic nerve and then goes to the hypothalamus and where is our nucleus suprachismatia, SCN. Our SCN is our master clock. So our, their cells, the neurons, from the SCN just synchronize, receive the stimulus from all the other clocks that I'll show you later on also and he acts like the master clock so he synchronizes all the rest of the clocks we don't only have this clock in our brain we have many clocks in all over our body just like the doctor was saying we also have one in the liver that's why we can entrain also with food food is an entrainment that's something that I may, many times I say to my shift workers, that please keep your food schedules. So your clocks are all disrupted. Just keep one. If you keep one, it's better to put the, all the others working properly. Because if you start disrupting all of your clocks, then you are in trouble. So, okay. This is our circadian system. So you can see our SCN on the top of your head. And then you have all the other clocks in our bodies. All cells have clocks, independent clocks. They are genetically generated, okay? And our muscle clock just synchronize all of them. And the external cues that we have from the environment, just like the light back cycle, that's what allows us to synchronize all the clocks. So it's a chronotype. What makes a chronotype? There are three things that can make a chronotype. So it's a genetic disposition that I already told you before that makes us having a period of around 24. Some of people have a period of less than 24. They are the early birds and the later people. So the late people have a longer period of approximately 24.4, around something like that. And then you have age. And of course you have light. This is what makes a chronotype. Okay, so all these three things. Here you can see what happens when you don't have the external key, when you don't have light when you train your clock. You start to free run. And usually, since we are not 24, but we are in general, on average, 24.2, we free run forward. So you keep delaying our clock. Okay? So you get later and later and later and later. So we start free running, just like this. Okay? This is what happens when we don't have light. When we are kept in a bunker, just like some studies that were already done in Munich, in bunkers, you don't have light. And people start free running in their internal cycling periods because they don't have the external cues to synchronize to the white light cycle, to the 24 hours light cycle. And this is, um, this is real, this is, this is a patient, this is a, a participant, this is an actimetry of 52 days of actimetry. Uh, so the yellow is light, the red is activity. 
and this is a two days beam, so this is local time, it's midnight, it's one day, two days. We also, in chronobiology, we need to look always two days in order to have day, night, and day. So that's where you can see the rhythms flowing. So you can see that when you have light, when he has light, he can train, he's more or less synchronized. When he stops having light, then he free runs. This is, this is not a patience because he can live with it, but it's a free run, it's a non-24 bidden patient. And this guy, he needs much more light than any one of us. So he needs uh, four or five times more light in order to entrain. That's why this happens to him. But this is a real case. So, what makes this light? So, how our circadian rhythms react to light, respond to light? So, this is the external time. This is light. This is the photo period in chronobiology. When you see a yellow bar, usually it's a photo period. And then the rest is night. So, when you have, so when you are exposed to light during the day, so your rhythm gets stripped. So you kept on the 24 hours window. But when you have light, a lot of light, a lot of light in the morning, you can go to bed a bit earlier. Okay? And on the reverse way, if you have light, on evening, very few light in the morning and a lot of light here, it goes you going drifting into the night. This is our PRC, so our phase response curve. So our biological rhythms, this is how we treat patients with circadian disorders. So when we have a delayed sleep rate patient, now he's sleeping very late, so we put them having light in their biological night, so in the beginning of the day, in order them to go sleeping a little bit earlier. But if we don't give them light in the morning, that's what happens when people stay indoors the whole morning and just go outside having a lot of light during the evening. What happens is it's making them go into bed much later. This is what light does to us. Many people, you know, in circadian fields, so in circadian rhythm disorders, many people ask us, oh, just give me a pill and I will sleep. And I just say, no, let's give you some light. Let's treat it with light. Let's do phototherapy, controlled phototherapy. It's the best way to treat people because people react to light and you can synchronize people with light, but at the right time of the day. Okay? So this is a bit tricky and a bit clinical. It's, it, if you have any question, please just ask. I will be able to answer you. So what do we do? So in Munich, Till just develop a questionnaire with all the sleep behavior. Not only when, when are you going to sleep, but when are you going to bed and at what time do you sleep? Because you can go to bed and you can stay awake in your bed you're not sleeping, you're just reading a book or something. And if you ask, at what time are you going to bed? You're going to bed, but you're going to be reading, you're not sleeping. So that makes a whole difference. And it's a whole different calculation for sleep duration. That's what we many times want to know. So timing and duration, it's super important. Not just duration, but also timing. Just like the doctor previously talking was saying, so we have sleep behavior in local time for work days and for free days, because this is absolutely different. When you usually, and we, I have data on that, I'm, uh, we are doing a paper, we have it already, it's going to publication now, a paper where we ask for sleep quality. It's a questionnaire, it's super used in sleep fields, it's a bit more questionnaire, and we separate it, and work days and three days in the usual one, the one that we usually use in the clinic. And we could realize that the, the answers that people are giving to the usual, just it's just giving us work days. It's the same answers. Okay? And it's totally different when they are answering for three days. 
they have a much better sleep quality on their free days. Okay? And we actually done that for the general population and also for patients. In sleep patients, this also happens. So they have a better sleep quality in their free days. So that's a social component here, super important in our sleep. Okay, that's why it's so important to combine those fields. Social fields, medical fields, chrono fields. <laughs> okay, this is really important. We have data on that. So the mid sleep point on three days corrected for sleep deprivation, this is how we calculate our chronotype. It's not just a simple chronotype, it's not a preference, it's not giving you, telling you when do you better like to be awake or whether you prefer to be sleeping. It's giving you phase of entrainment because it's actually following your behavior. Okay? So this is the Munich chronotype distribution. This is a worldwide question, it's answered for many, many countries. We have almost 290,000 people here, okay? Uh, and we can see that it's, it has normal distribution. So the majority of people just follow here in the middle one. Then here we have the early people. And here we have the late people. It's a little bit skewed if you can see because we have more people that are late than people that are early. But the majority falls up to here. Okay? This is real data. So, and it's published, so you can see it also. Okay, next one. So chronotypes, they are not static. They change all over, you know, your age, during your lifespan, they change, just like it was shown before also. So what we can see is that people are early when they are young and then become later and then turn it on again. We can see that men are later than women and women become earlier than men. So that's why many people, we used to say until used to make a joke with this, that's why usually women just married with or date with older guys because in that point they can actually have the breakfast at the same time otherwise it will be always the woman doing the breakfast so that's why it's good to have an older an older partner because they, they, then they can have the same timings because okay usually this is what happens during your life men are more later men is doing delicious <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah because women start the, so and this turn around it's, it's also published, this is, a, this is a paper where this is published, when till established a marker for the end of adolescence, because it's actually when it stops adolescence that they become earlier again. So during the adolescence they can later, 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 and then when stop it, just go back again. So till just published this as an end mark of the adolescence. So that's some questions that we also would like to answer because with this, but it's still working on process. So here you can see some biological rhythms that also change during life. And what you can see here, so here you have the infancy, childhood, adolescence, adulthood, and then later life. This is, uh, these are the rhythms of cortisol, body temperature, and melatonin. They are, they, you know, they are linked, all of them. So the melatonin, it's our night hormone. It's not our sleep hormone. For us as humans, it propends to sleep. It makes us a bit sleepy. But it's, it's not the sleep hormone. Because of the urinal animals actually also have the melatonin during the night although they are awake and they're, you know, so it's not correct, strictly co correct to say that it's the sleep hormone, it's the night hormone. And the melatonin establishes our biological night. So give us when our biological rhythm is ticking for night. That's why it starts being produced when you have the night and then it stops with the, with, the, with the early morning, and then comes the cortisol. 
And what we can see during your lifespan is that these rhythms dumped. Okay? So you have a lower amplitude in melatonin, cortisol, and also in body temperature. That's why you have your sleep is less consolidated when you are older. So there's a lot of things that physiological things that are strict to your hormones, to these hormones. And when you have a dump on your rhythms, they start working less efficiently. Okay? And these rhythms can be improved when you have external cues, strong external cues. That's why we were talking about go outside, get sun, because those rhythms, they are ticking according to your light. Okay? It's a night hormone, so there's a light, but you're ticking. Many people ask me, oh, so how can the people that live in the north, in Iceland, or in Norway, or in, you know, in Sweden, how do they live? I said, okay, they adapt to those rhythms. They don't live super well. <laughs> I might say that. Many of them have depression during the winter. Mm -hmm. I, I collaborate with the uh, Karolinska people, and they're always saying, okay, we cover it, but it's something that you need to know. Never come here during the winter. You couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. You couldn't. You just couldn't. We are adapted to it. So someone that comes abroad to work here with us in the winter suffers. So what they use, and actually I, I also done that when I'm in Munich, because from Munich I go in winter, <laughs> and we have light box. So we take our breakfast with a light box in front of us so that it can be awakening, okay? But we are here in the sun, so we are southerners, very lucky, but we don't, you don't go outside, you don't pick the sun. And actually I have some data of light exposure and we are the ones that have less light exposure although having a lot of light and i think it's something because we we take it for granted so it's always there so why should i go outside it's always there but in the northern countries when they have light they actually go outside and they get the sun when they come and it's it's cultural that again social <laughs> branch came up here to mix up with our rhythms but yeah, they adapt. They have light box. They have they supplement themselves. So and they don't like when they have the winter. They actually are counting their days so they can have sun again. And for them, it's also difference when there is snow. So the snow also reflects light. For them, it's also a difference when there is a winter with or without snow. Oh yeah. Because yeah, they the love snow, the snow. When they come the snow, snow, they feel all better because they, they get more. They feel better. They get more light. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. And if the snow comes, they are like really suffering. When the snow comes, totally. Then, okay, yeah, you can't that's, have that's true. That's true. What Daniel is saying. They all say, "Oh, that's it's so good when it's snowing because everything is white, and we like the white light. Although small, they don't. They only have very few hours of light during the days. But when they have the snow, they go outside." They like it. So social jet lag. What's social jet lag? This is a concept. Uh, I'm very lucky. It was still that developed it. <laughs> so very lucky to be, you know, the daughter of social jet lag. So social jet lag. It's a mismatch between your internal clock and your social clock. I was talking about three clocks. We have solar clock, we have social clock, and we have biological clock. The biological clock is the one that is ticking inside of us. It's our endogenous rhythm. The social clock is the one that is on your wrists or in your walls. And the solar clock is the clock that is given through the light. And the noon is given by the highest point of exposure, so the highest point of light during the low total light exposure across the day. And so what's happening here is that people, usually during your work days, they try to go to bed because they need to go to wake up in the morning, but they actually, they can't sleep. They go there, they go turning around, they're wrong because their internal clock, it's not saying that it's not yet. 
it's not ticking to go sleepy. Your internal clock is saying, it's still, it's still early, how should I go? But then, in the morning, we have the social clock waking up. So we are awakening during our biological night. Our internal clock, it's still night, but you need to be awake. So you need to wake up with your alarm clock. And what's happening here, it's that when you go to your free days, you get oversleep. Firstly, you don't need to go sleep early because you don't need to wake up in the morning, so you go to bed at the time that you really desire to go. And then you stay in bed, you know, I, I don't have alarm clock in the morning, now I can sleep. And you then they oversleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they oversleep, you know. That's what happens. You get an oversleep. Usually what happens in the first day is that you have a sleep rebound, so you sleep a lot, namely the adolescents, okay, and the early age people. When we get older, we don't have enough power to sleep that much. So I guess it's a growth. But usually when you get older, also we have less sleep. It's not that we need actually, but usually people sleep less when you are older. And so, this is what's happening. So this is social jet lag. Social jet lag because you have a jet lag that imposed by your social block. That's why it was named by social jet lag. You actually have a social jet lag. If you see here, you have a jet lag. If you see here, it looks like you are traveling to New York and then turning back again. On those two days, you go to New York. So you have a jet lag. Okay, so the frequency in jet, social jet lag in our population is major. This is according to the Munich Chronotype database, and we can actually see that very few people doesn't have social jet lag nowadays. Okay, and it's super linked to also to chronotype, of course, because as later as you are, as more social jet lag you should have, because you will be sleeping later and you'll be awakening at the same time because school starts at the same time every day. It doesn't change just because you are late. So that's why you have this. It's very linked. If, if you remember the previous graph that I show you with chronotypes, it's quite close. They are quite close. So, and these are the consequences of social jet lag. These are published there already. So you have more odds of being a smoker, of consuming alcohol, drinking caffeine, these are all of stimulants. And if you are sleep deprived because you are under a social jet lag, what's happening is that you, you need to be awakened in order to cope with things. So you have more coffee. We need some caffeine to keep us awake. That's what's happening when you have social jet lag. So, social jet lag and health, it was already sp spoke before, you have an eye rot of being obese. Because as an additional thing that happens when you have your sleep curtailed, it's that we have a hormone that it's, produce, it's produced exclusively when we are sleeping. That is the leptin. The leptin, it's our society hormone. And if you don't sleep or if you curtail your sleep, you will not be producing it. That's why when we are sleeping, we are not hungry. Okay? Because we are producing leptin. But we, if you are not sleeping, you will not be producing it and you will be much more hungry in the morning. And not only hunger, but you will ask for hypercaloric stuff. You don't like to have a salad. You like to have a hamburger, you have to have something with a lot of sugar and a lot of grass. Okay? That's what's happening when you don't produce your leptin. So, sorry to give you all those bad things. <laughs> bad. So these are all the consequences that you have. They are published, okay? You have there. This is the, po the paper where they are published. So. These are the consequences of social jet lag. They are quite straight to sleep deprivation because this is what we have also when we are under social jet lag. We are sleep deprived. So you have emotional response, cognitive response, and somatic response. 
something that is super important for you, all of you that are working with people in school that are sleep deprived and around that sort of jet like you have exhaustion, increased irritability. You have a lot of students that probably are super, you know, annoying and screaming and you say something and they start screaming at you and want to beat you, you know? Many of them, they are sleep deprived, okay? And many of the hyperactive children that are supposedly hyperactive, they're not truly hyperactive. They are just sleep deprived, okay? That's an additional issue that you should take into account. And there are many times I'm, t I'm, take I'm talking about this because this is really important. And people just start giving Ritalin to all the kids because they are, you know, they are hyperactive. No, they are sleep deprived. Put them sleeping, the sleep that they need, and they start improving during the day. So, now came to you, <laughs> Spaniards. <laughs> so, this is published. This is a very recent publication because now we have those things that are permanent winter time, uh, standard time, that it's a more proper term to, to use, or daylight saving time, crappy daylight saving time, mainly for you because you are in the wrong time zone. So in the background, <laughs> let's talk about now the winter time, that it's the standard time. This is your time now, this is our time now. So you can see behind you have solar time. This is one of our clocks, solar clock. It's behind. And in front, so in darker, you have your clock time. And you can see that you have a mismatch between them, quite clearly. So you, in the least, you should never have the central river time. Never. <laughs> we are wrong already. We, Portuguese. So here, it's how it should be. We should have four time zones, not three, four. And you should be together with the, with the French and the UK and Belgium and Netherlands to be in accordance to sun time, to sun clock. And we, and Ireland, and Iceland, should be in another time zone as well. <laughs> so now imagine how you are. You have a really different mismatch between your two clocks. Two of your clocks are already super mismatched. Clock time and solar time. So please, if you have any influence on this, <laughs> go and step on. This is important. We are trying till it's very involved in this, and so we are trying. So I'll give you some. I will go again into this later on, so that because I will give you some examples, some data, real data, unpublished data on this. So some examples from real life. As I work in the clinic, I have some examples already. Also, this is a sleep deprived. This is an actimetry. So you have activity on, on red, you have yellow, it's light. These are the sleep bounds. This is a special program that we have. This is not a common treatment for actimetry. If you buy an actimeter, you will, do, you, not, you will not have this shape. This is a proper program from Prono Biology that we have. And that's why we can see it quite properly because we want to see the rhythms. We want to see how things flow. Many, many days, as much days as we can. This is our goal. So this is a sleep deprived student with 21 years from the university, Lisbon Medical University, of course. <laughs> One student from the first year. And you can see that they are sleeping very few because they are waking super early, six in the morning, in order to go to school. So you can see that in their off days, so the weekdays, there you go, they are sleeping more. But many of them here, he just had one day because he needs to study also. So he's super sleep deprived. Here you can see in this day he has one, two, three, four, four hours of sleep. For someone that is studying, it's very few. Usually we say that we need, for an output, seven to eight hours. That's, but that's not, you know, how it should, because we are all different. I can, I probably I need eight hours, and you will need seven hours, and he will need nine hours. Who knows? We are all different. That's why we are humans. 
That's what makes us so difficult to work with humans because we are very different in between us. So here you can see social jet lag. So in red, you have work days, and in, in green, you have free days. And you can see that people are sleeping much more. I think I have a night. Yeah, I have it. So you can see here that they are oversleeping the first day, and then they close normal again. This is, you know, daily basis. So this is a shift worker. You can see that they, they are shifting all the time. Okay, it's not fixed. This is a pilot, an airline pilot. So they, they are not doing, they are not going long haul. Long haul is just a medium and short haul, so Europe. But they are waking. They wake very, very early in the morning sometimes. Just like here, you know? They are waking around three o'clock in the morning to go to go work. And as you can see, he didn't sleep that much because he just couldn't. Because the internal clock is saying that it's not it's still not proper to sleep, but he needs to wake up in the morning. So that's what happened to shift workers also. So here it's another example of shift work. You can see that it's all, you know, you have bunches of sleep during the day because they try to do some naps in order to compensate into because during the night, they can't sleep all the time, so they do a, they do a nap, usually. This is a delayed sleep wake phase of the patient. So here, you can see that they are sleeping around 4 in the morning. That was a, there was a day where actually he sleeps a bit earlier. Here, he didn't, he didn't sleep. He was just awakened the whole night. <laughs> Sometimes happens. Uh, but namely, we saw a with another disorder, the free runners, they do this many times in order to, tr to try to go to their time, but it's, it's useless because it's not easy to do that. But many times you do that. And for, for, jet, for jet lag, sometimes we also do that in order to cope. So we just need the price to have enough pressure to go sleep, then you can actually sleep and then go outside and get the sun. It's the best thing we can do when you go abroad. So now I will show you some data. So these are data that we are collecting for many countries in Europe. So we have our MCDQ database. We pick some countries that we have in our database. Spaniards also, with very few data. Actually, we are trying to find uh, investigators that could eventually come on board in this project with their data. Um, so we have 165. 165,378 people here. Uh, we have data from Germany, UK, Australia, Belgium, Netherlands, Spain, Portugal, Ireland, and Iceland. This is a collaboration already that we have with Icelanders. This is not from the NCDQ database. This is data that we, it came on board with us <coughs> in order to do this, this comparison. So I separate through GMT and GMT plus one that it's your time, it's GMT plus one. And then you can see that actually, this is the average mid-sleep point, so the chronotype phase of entrainment. Mm -hmm. And you can see that actually you are the latest. And something that happens is that as much west than you are from your time zone, you get later and later and later. So you can see that here, actually, you are, th this is by longitude. Actually, the Belgians are, are a little bit earlier, but you are a bit further in north, I don't know. It might be something like that. Uh, but actually, you are the latest, just like us. Should be the Icelanders, but they are not as late as we are. So but we think, so one of the things that we think they're in Portugal, so in my group, we think that we actually have some genetic thing that might be influencing the Portuguese of being that plate. Because in comparison to the Spaniards, we have a very few difference. We should have a much larger difference because you are really in the wrong time zone. We are much more closer to our sun time than you are. So it's super normal for you to be super late. 
Okay? So this is in accordance to what should be expected from you. And uh, so I will be showing you now. I, I, yeah, I put this slide again just for you to, to know to see how things are. So we are there much later than the Icelanders. Although the Icelanders, they are super intelligent. They don't change their time zone already. They don't have their life saving time. They have permanent winter time already. So that's why during the DST they still have this color because they still have the same time. But we are here and of course we are later than the UK, we are later than the Ireland, uh, but we are later than the Icelanders and I still don't know why. Okay? That's something that we are still studying. We think that might be a genetic thing. But you are here in a different time zone. Namely the Galician people, they should be, they are here. <coughs> so it's really bad. <laughs> That's why you are so late. You are in accordance to your solar time, not to your solar time. Okay, so this is the average sleep duration. So I have data also from the UK for sleep duration, as you can see. And so, um, for the GMT, we have the highest iteration, you know, and you know why? Because we actually start working later than in the UK. Although being later chronotypes, our school start times and our working times are starting earlier, uh, later, sorry, than in the UK or the Ireland. That's why our social component is helping us, actually, okay? Here, the Irelanders, who then? They are in the same latitude as uh, longitude as we are, but they are starting working at eight, and we usually start working at nine. And this makes a difference. You see how a social component can influence that much here? This is where you can see it. So in the UK, they also, although being earlier chronotypes, they sleep more than in Ireland because in Ireland there are later chronotypes than in the UK. Okay? And then I can show you the social jet lag. <coughs> this is related to social jet lag. So you can see that in Iceland they have a lot of social jet lag. In Portugal, not that much. That's why we sleep more. And in Ireland they have a lot of social jet lag and less in the UK, because they are earlier chronotypes. That's why can, they can sleep more, okay? And of course, let's talk about Spain now. What? Champions are social jet lag. And the winners are, <laughs> yes. And the winners are. So you can see here through the comparisons, actually, the social jet lag, it's, you have the same as the Icelanders, because they are also in their own time zone. They should never be there. So, and in Ireland, they have also a lot of social jet lag for them because they are start working super early. And, but for the rest, okay, all different. Here, Dutchland, you know what? In Germany, because they mainly have industry and the industry start working very early in the morning. That's why they have so much social jet lag. And that's how it's so important, the social component here. Okay? The social component is really important in our biological rhythms, and it's shown here. Country comparisons. And you can see that the social thing here, so the start, the working times, are influencing all these results. And you have the consequences because I did them already. This is another study that I've also done with Greenwich time, so comparing summertime and winter time, and that's something that it, again we are a bit strange in Portugal because what happens is that when you have a weaker zyte fever, so less sun, it's happening in the winter. So what happens to us, it's putting us sleeping more. And it's putting us also being a later chronotype because you can't synchronize. So in the absence of light, you get later. So in all the countries, in this comparison, you are not here because this is just GMT time. It's a paper that we are doing for GMT time. So, but we can see that in the other countries, 
they become later for winter here. Winter is the green because it's the time that we want. And summer is in red because we don't want summertime, okay? Keep this in mind. So we can see that in the winter we are later because we have a weaker sign giver. But for Portugal this doesn't happen. I know we are awkward. I still don't know. We still need to go into deep a bit more in this data. I don't know why this is happening, but all the rest is it's in accordance with what that we was trying. So it's totally in accordance. So the Icelanders are later in winter, just like in the UK, in Ireland. Perfect. All perfect. Okay? So this is the comparison. This is a bit strange graph. I just put it here. This is winter time, summer time, and the comparisons in between the countries. It's a little bit weird and awkward. We got a lot of things there. So by conclusion, we can say that social jet lag is highly prevalent among, among modern societies. A high discrepancy between social and solar clocks leads to higher social jet lag, as I'll show you here. For a European country comparison, Spain seems to be the latest country with less sleep duration and higher social jet lag. Although Portugal, it's in GMT time zone. So, okay, we are the same, but in different time zones, so we are awkward. Forget us. You are in accordance with the data. <laughs> Spain's social clock is highly misaligned. Highly. I should, you know, put in black. With the other two clocks, solar and internal clock. You are all misaligned. For GMT time zone countries, Portugal seems to be the latest country and the, uh, and the only one latest for summer. I still don't have an answer for that, sorry for that, but that's how it is. Thank you very much for your attention. Questions? I'll be very glad to do it. Thank you.